Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my latest reading vlog. I'm currently cracking on with Filmic Cuts title pending by Ollie Jacobs. This is a short story collection. I will be reviewing it for Todd and Dane's indie read along. But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to go make some food in a bit. I'm going to make some like homemade vegan bangers and mash. And it sounds like really interesting sausages because they've got like lots of like uh, like roasted parsnips and carrot, and some beetroot, and some other bits in. So yeah, it should be good. All right, I'll let you know how that goes. And then just as I finished filming, this little man came to say hello, didn't you, Biggie? Why are you so blurry? All right, so we have homemade vegan sausages uh, with carrot, beetroot, parsnip, uh, vital wheat gluten and rice in. And then we have this homemade veggie mash and this red wine, red wine onion gravy. I'm going in. It looks great. Honey afterwards, if you like. As Sherlock Holmes replaced... I am listening to Stephen Fry read the Sherlock Holmes short stories. Uh, this is for uh, Brian's Bookshelves. is doing a Sherlock Holmes readathon with a short story a day. So I'm listening through to them and I'll probably do a little bit of a wrap-up at the end. And that was from in Berlin. What else is new? I have been doing a little bit of filming and editing. I've got my wrap-up film now, so I just need to export the video. I need to... Uh, I need to, well I'll tell you about this, I've finished reading Film It Cuts, title pending by Ollie Jacobs. I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5, it's a short story collection, I've talked about Jacobs a lot before. And I don't want to say too much about it here because basically, it's, there's going to be my Todd and, Todd and Dane's indie read along video in which I'll go into it in some more. But yeah, pretty cool short stories, uh, there's the odd poem as well, like humorous poems in here. And um... You know, I, I'm just a fan of Ollie Jacobs. I like his stuff, and this is a short, short story collection, so there's some good and some bad, but all in all, you know, glad I read it. Uh, I also went to the doctors earlier. I'm getting prescribed this drug that helps you to quit smoking, so I'm going to try that. Uh, what else is new? I think that's about it, really. The other thing is I have been reading Lock and Key Volume 6, Alpha and Omega. I'm about three quarters of the way through it now. I'm really enjoying it so far. There's been like a reference to Magic the Gathering, a reference to Carrie by Stephen King, who is Joe Hill's dad, which is cool. So yeah, I'm enjoying the way it's, it's wrapping up and it's on course to be possibly my favorite book of the, the uh, series. So that's good. I like it when things end strong. And uh, here I have NRM by Agatha Christie, which is a Tommy and Tuppence book, which uh, I took this with me while I was waiting at the doctors and read, read all of this. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish this off next. Cool. I think that's where I'm at. All right, so I'm sitting here watching Z, uh, Z Nation or Z Nation, I guess it's called if you're uh, in America at the moment. I'm on uh, the most recent season of it anyway. I think I already mentioned that I finished uh, reading Film It Cuts by Ollie Jacobs. I've also just finished reading Alpha and Omega, uh, volume six of Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. Thought it was a good end to the series. And even though the series didn't necessarily go in the direction I expected, I did enjoy it. Also in this, there was a nice little reference to Carrie, which is obviously written by Stephen King, Joe Hill's father. And there was also a little scene with them playing Magic the Gathering, which I thought was cool as well. But yeah, overall, satisfying conclusion, and this was a 4 out of 5 for me. And so now, I'm reading NRM by Agatha Christie, and this is a Tommy and Tuppence book. I'm on page 118, enjoying it so far. I shall probably finish it tomorrow, and then, I don't know, because... Basically, these this is the end of my TBR. These are the only books that I have left that I really want to get to. The rest of them are all going to be bedtime books. Although sometimes I do bring bedtime books back in to be regular books. So we'll see. I made Bun Bon Hue, which is a Vietnamese thing with noodles. That's homemade chili sauce. I've got bird's eye chilies. And I've got a Final Destination on because why not? This looks amazing and hot. I'm in Oxford and I'm cooking with Bex. So we're making a spice, well, not so spicy, but a quinoa chili. Lovely. Got the guac and the hummus and the sour cream. Just talking to the internet. Here's some rice. And then here we have a big thing of quinoa chili. Look at that. Oh, yes. It is going to be very good. Nice Ibanez.
Carol on the feet. Actually, I think I heard someone talk about this on BookTube. Down there, they've got Random Acts of Kindness by Danny Wallace. It's quite cute. Oh, yeah, and about that. they've got Atonement there. Have they? Yeah. Have you read that? No. <laughs> that, was, that other one was my first procurement, but I'm... Bex has had the Carol Ann Duffy book, so you're going to come back and refill it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Give a bit for my next time. Yeah. So, it looks like it's Lightfold Street, but not quite. I like how there are people on top of Coral. I suppose they live there, don't they? And they've just come out the window. Was he, in a, was he in a Harley Mobility scooter then? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm having a jolly old time considering I hate people and the sunlight. And I think Sudanese. <laughs> hey, look, those guys. We're wearing alien. Yeah, they look. It actually reminds me of. They look like the Beastie Boys in the Intergalactic music video. Because then that they wear all white and then have. Hats on. Be a sport <laughs> and army hula hooping as well. They're doing what I think they're doing, they are doing.
Down to look, they've even got the holes in the ozone layer. <laughs> That is like an eight-year-old girl you could beat the shit out of. <laughs> it's a headdress and a half, isn't it? Trees, please. please. It's the Pitt Rivers.
Oh, I don't know. Me when I'm not expecting. Because. Oh, is it ridiculous? Because why not? You know Police and thieves in the street. Hello, it is Monday and I have a hangover. We went to the Cowley Road Carnival in Oxford yesterday, so that's what you just saw. It was nice. I have some books to update you on. So I finished reading The Dane Curse by Dashiell Hammett. Uh, this was like a bedtime book for me. It was very dull, considering it's got my name in it, and I've read and enjoyed Hammett before. It just wasn't very good. I kept zoning out. I didn't really keep track of the characters. There was a lot of, like, mysticism in it. And really, like, when I go to, ha to Hammett, I want, like, hard-boiled detective stories, and that was not really what this was. So I gave it a 2 out of 5. Actually, I think I gave it a 1.5 out of 5. I also read NRM by Agatha Christie, so this was a Tommy and Tuppence book. I gave this like a 3.25 out of 5, set during the Second World War, and basically it's dealing with what, what's called the Fifth Column, which is also it's similar to like the Wooden Horse of Troy, so it's people working for the Nazis who live inside Britain, and Tommy and Tuppence have to track down NRM. So yeah, that was cool. Uh, then I read The Diabolical Club by Stephen Colgan, so this is book two in a series. Uh, I will read the blurb of this. Strange things are going on in Black Dog Wood. A blindfolded skeleton has been unearthed. There have been sightings of some kind of monster, and rumours abound of naughty goings on at night. And then the local MP, Sir Giles Luscott Warren, is accused of murder. Giles' best chance to prove his innocence lies with the retired police detective Frank Shunter. Can he discover who done it? And what connects all of these curious events to a long lost manuscript to crime author Agnes Crabb? In this sequel to A Murder to Die For, I've re reviewed that before, I'll link to it below, Stephen Colgan once again takes us back to, takes us back to South Heroidshire for a comedy of murderous proportions. Uh, my only real thing I didn't like in this was that there were some animal rights activists who I didn't think... I, I mean, because the thing is, is this is like comedy, but also it's like a crime caper almost. So it's not supposed to be super realistic, and I don't think they were portrayed particularly realistic, but they were played for the laughs. So... Even though I don't think it was necessarily real realistic, I think it worked in the context of the story. Overall, I gave it a 4.25 out of 5. There was a lot of fun moments in there, some meta stuff, like references to the first book. But also, for example, a character had a book by Ariadne Oliver, who is a fictional character that Agatha Christie created, a fictional writer. So that was cool. Uh, then I read Amsterdam by Ian McEwan. This one started really slowly and then started to pick up and I almost started to like it. I liked some of the, like the actual writing was okay, but the characters in it are so fundamentally unlikable. And really, actually, so my main problem with this was that I thought it had quite a harmful approach to euthanasia because basically it's used as a way for characters to murder each other. And I just think, A, it's not very realistic. It was very obvious it was going to happen and not very realistic. You managed to have a predictable ending that just didn't make any sense. But also, I just think for people, especially in like 1997 when this was published, when people didn't really know a huge amount about euthanasia, I think it's quite harmful, you know. I don't think there was anything sinister in his intentions, I just don't think it was very well executed. So I gave it a 2.5 out of 5, which is bad because Bex loves Ian McEwan, but oh well. And then this is the story of Brexit by J.A. Hazy and J.P. Morris, so this is just like a fun ladybird book for adults, so... Being in the European Union is terribly complicated. Leaving it is terribly complicated too. Luckily, the choice on the ballot paper did not look very complicated at all. It was something about freedom of bananas. And we have this image here and it says, The Prime Minister organised the referendum because he was sure everybody would want things to stay exactly as they were. 
But it turned out that not everybody was having as nice time as the Prime Minister. So the Prime Minister ran away. It was quiet in the Prime Minister's shed. So yeah, very amusing, four out of five, and it's not too soon, so we're all right. And now I am reading, I think I've just lost my place. Oh well. Now I'm reading In Real Life, Love, Lies and Identity in the Digital Age by Neve Shulman, who is the host of Catfish, uh, which you might have seen. It's actually really interesting because he's talked about some of his earlier life and how like, he was catfished, which is why he created the show. He actually created a documentary movie first, and then the show came. And I've seen the documentary movie as well, so I'm kind of familiar with his story, but I didn't know a lot of the stuff. Like, he was a bit of a wrong, and like he said, he was like selling weed and magic mushrooms and stuff, and like he was getting in lots of trouble and stealing, and it's like, oh, okay. But um, yeah, enjoying that so far. So that's where I'm at. So with that said, I guess I'm going to love you and leave you because this has been kind of a long vlog because of the carnival. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.